Hey YouTube, Wes here checking in with a brand new video for you. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. This is a video sort of sharing my finds from a recent record store crawl, I guess you could call it, I did with Brad over at H2 Vinyl and Tim of DJ High Noon channel. I will have both of their channels linked down below. Uh, recently took a trip down to Orlando and met up with those two guys and we hung out for the day hit up several record stores and hung out, had lunch, had a great time. Um, none of us filmed any video or anything. I'm, I'm the type of person when I meet people in person, I kind of like to just get to know them and hang out and chill. I'm not really one to just sort of jump up and put a camera in people's faces. So unfortunately, there's no video of us digging together or doing anything like that. Uh, there, is a, there is a photo of us that uh, Brad has. Uh, hopefully he'll share that on his channel. Uh, of us at uh, our last stop of the day over at Park Ave CDs. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was a good time, a good day. Uh, we all found some stuff to buy and had fun sort of bantering back and forth about records and other things and life and <laughs> stuff like that. So it was a fun time and I'm really glad I, I got to meet those guys and I'm looking forward to uh, hanging out again, uh, maybe at the record show in Orlando coming up in a few weeks here, or maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe I can talk them into coming up to the record show here in Gainesville in uh, October. So yeah, that was a good time, uh, a good day, as I said. Uh, so I just want to share with you what I found myself and, and keep this sort of separate from my August finds video because that video is going to be extremely long. I'm getting ready to film it after I film this video. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a pretty big stack of records back there that I picked up in August and these are just some more and I don't want to make that video any longer so I'm going to do this as a separate video. So anyway, stop rambling and show some records, damn it. All right, so the first place we went to after lunch, we had lunch first, and then we went to a record store that I hadn't been before, been to before called Reruns Records, and it's Re, R-U-N-Z Records. Um, <laughs> it just so happened it was, it was sort of in a part of town next to the stadium where the Florida-Miami game was taking place. Yeah, so it was kind of crazy around there, and the pe people were yelling at us that we couldn't park there even though we were parked where we were supposed to be for the record store, and it, w it was kind of a crazy thing, but it, we, we told them what we, were, what we were up to and that we weren't just trying to park there and go to the game. We were actually going to the record store, and they were like, oh, okay, cool, and, and they understood it after that. So... Yeah, Reruns Records, a place I hadn't been to before, really cool little record shop. Uh, I spent most of my time digging down in their sort of lower level, which is their two, one to five dollar records, I guess. They had one dollar, two dollar, three dollar, or five dollar records. Uh, they were all marked different prices. Took me a little while to figure things out. And yeah, I just had a good time digging down there. I dug in the, the, the upper bins a bit. Um, saw some interesting stuff, but just nothing I was willing to to pull the trigger on it was higher price stuff and it was just nothing that I had to have absolutely so uh, go ahead and share with you the few records I did pull out of their their sort of lower discount section here uh, first thing I got here is a, a solo record by Stuart Copeland of the police titled the rhythmatist this one's from 1985 yeah really cool um, it's getting it's another record that sort of gets into that that mid 80s african sort of feel that a lot of pop artists were going through with you know like paul simon's graceland and stuff this is sort of going into that same sort of realm where they're blending pop music with with very rhythmic african roots kind of stuff uh yeah it was, it's pretty interesting i found this for a buck so i thought you know, I haven't checked out his solo work. I didn't know he had solo work, so I thought, what the heck? I'll grab it for a buck and check it out, and it's been pretty enjoyable. All right, the second thing I picked up at reruns there, uh, don't normally buy disco. I knew this was going to be disco, but the cover is kind of crazy. I like the cover, and it's also produced by Giorgio Moroder, so I had to just go ahead and check it out, and that is uh, Munich Machine. Uh, a a whiter, a whiter shade of pale. So there is a cover of a whiter shade of pale on here, which is not good at all. It's a disco cover of a whiter shade of pale, and I just do not like it. Uh, but there are other just sort of original tracks on here are really, really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, again, it's Giorgio Moroder. If 
if you're talking about disco music, that's that's the guy you look for, I guess you could say. Uh, so yeah, this this was a pretty cool cool spin, other than the the whiter shade of pale cover, which is pretty bad in in, in my opinion. But fun little three dollar pickup. Three dollars is probably a little too much to pay for this, but I, I just I something told me I had to have it, and and it's a, it was an enjoyable listen. So I picked that one up there as well. And then the third and probably my favorite thing I picked up there at reruns. Uh, they did have a lot of hip hop, a lot of twelve inches. Uh, yeah, they had a whole 12 inch hip hop section and then a 12 inch, or then an LP hip hop section. So, big hip hop section there, which is really cool. Um, and what I found in the discount section that was hip hop related was Mr. Mac Magic's Rap Attack Volume 3. Uh, so, just classic early to mid 80s uh, hip hop artists you know, Dana Dane, uh, Salt and Peppa, Eric B. and Rakeem, uh, Run DMC, uh, Sweet T, EPMD. Yeah, just just some great artists a bunch of other artists on here uh, yeah what really caught my eye on here was the uh, run DMC UB Ellen remix which I hadn't heard before I thought I never I didn't know there was such a thing and I checked it out it's a very slightly different version it's it's yeah it's and it's 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 one of those things where it's just different enough where it doesn't sound right to someone who's always listened to the original you know LP version of UB Ellen and that was kind of the hip-hop track that got me into hip-hop really uh you know when that song came out and it it was pretty big it was all over the pop pop charts as well as you know uh, other charts so that's that was sort of my introduction to hip-hop and so that's that song has a special meaning to me it, it was funny it was fun it was a new sort of musical genre that i really didn't know about at the time i had heard you know I'd heard Blondie doing some rapping on the radio before, but really, you know, whatever I had heard hip hop related before was just what was on the pop radio stations here in my town. And that, you know, that UB Ellen was sort of something that was new and it was my own thing. And so that has a special place in my heart. So yeah, this it was really cool to find this and I've, I've been enjoying uh, checking out the other tracks on here that I wasn't familiar with and some of the other stuff that I am familiar with, you know, the, that sort of mid eighties, uh, hip hop stuff. So nice little two LP compilation. And, uh, that was my last pickup from reruns records. Um, after we went to reruns records, we went to a place called foundation records, sort of a smaller shop. It's a mixture of a vintage shop and a record shop. It's kind of, I would say half and half as far as records and half, half records and half vintage um, they had they had like it's it was it was an odd experience for me personally anyway as far as a record store they had like twenty dollar bins ten dollar bins and five dollar bins and, and it was just kind of weird it's like you know you go in the twenty dollar bins and some of the stuff in there is worth twenty dollars and some of the stuff is maybe a five or ten dollar record you know it's just weird and then you go in the ten dollar bins and yeah some of that stuff's probably a ten dollar record and some of it's not so it, it it's kind of off-putting for me in that situation I don't know I just it's just a weird experience for me that you kind of have to dig through a bunch of stuff that's not really worth the asking price to find something that might be just worth the asking price um, and you're probably not gonna find a bargain there kind of thing I don't know it just I didn't, I didn't care for it, I guess, but I didn't purchase anything there. I think Tim and Brad both purchased uh, some things at Foundation Records, but I didn't get anything there. So our third and final stop for the day was at the Classic, probably the best record store in Orlando. My favorite record store in Orlando, anyway, I'll say, is uh, Park Ave CDs. Uh, so Park Ave CDs has a really great... Uh, mainly a really great new section in my opinion they have just really well curated new music section uh, really high quality stuff i see things there that i just don't see in other record stores that i visit uh, the record stores here i visit here in gainesville or, or other places they just have a really well curated music selection of new mostly new music by I, you can tell it's been curated by people who really are passionate about music and really into music and they really they really know their stuff and they get in some really cool, interesting things. So I always love digging through their, their new section. Um, and they have a decent used section. Uh, they have really interesting things used. Uh, 
it's kind of small. You're not going to find, you know, there's not a lot to look through as far as the use section, but there's always interesting things in there as well. And they get some really rare stuff in their use section. So it's it, the use section kind of goes fast. Um, and it, it's always interesting to to go in there and dig there. But I, I, I mainly like it for their their new their new vinyl selection. They just have interesting stuff that you just don't see anywhere else in my opinion so that's that's the main reason why i like uh park ave cds so actually i've been there many many times before but for some reason never got a t-shirt and i love i love the record store so much so i bought this uh shirt from them i wanted something that sort of gave the feel of florida so this one had had sort of that on it it said park ave records on it and it's got some oranges and Girl on the Beach there. This is their Record Store Day 2016 shirt. Uh, so I picked that up to add to my, my Record Store uh, t-shirt collection. Uh, so yeah, here are the things I picked up uh, while we were there at Park Ave. First thing I got here, this is out of their, um, they have their sort of discounted section. It's like three, five or $7, I think are their discounted records. First one here I found was pretty interesting. This is a comp on Rhino Records titled, uh, Rock Instrumentals, The History of Rock Instrumentals, Volume 2. Uh, so you got like Tequila by The Champs, Rebel Rouser by Dwayne Eddy, uh, Rawhide by Link Ray, Ram Riders doing Ghost Riders in the Sky. A lot of stuff like that. Just, you know, rock instrumental classic stuff there. Really cool things. I'd like to find if there, well, there's obviously a Volume 1 somewhere, but if there's more volumes of this, uh, yeah, I'd like to pick those up. Is that was that was a pretty cool find, and that was three dollars, so that was uh, pretty good. This next thing I found is kind of a well, it's a female hip hop artist, but it's hip hop done with sort of an electronic EDM kind of vibe to it, I guess you could say. Uh, so very. Uh, it's it's hard to explain, but just just imagine like EDM styled hip hop, and it's cut, titled Amanda Blank. I love you. So this is a modern release. I'm not sure how old this is. Um, 2009 was the release on this, so it was 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, this was in the discounted bin as well, uh, and. And it's it was seven dollars two LP set so I thought that was pretty cool this was a blind buy for me I just bought this looked it up real quick on my phone saw what it was I thought yeah I'll give it a try I like the cover I like the artwork uh, so yeah grab that one uh, this next one was sort of a nostalgic thing I just had to grab it I haven't seen this on vinyl before uh, this was five dollars uh, Belle Biv DeVoe's album Hootie Mac. 1989 or no 1993 okay yeah that's why you don't see it on vinyl very much 1993 definitely after the age of vinyl but uh, yeah definitely a lesser successful album for them but it was you know they were they were big at the time so when this did come out it, I remember hearing these songs and it was, this is sort of just as I said just some fun nostalgia so pick that one up for five dollars all right, and this next one from the sort of discount used bin, uh, another blind buy for me, another one I sort of just looked up on my phone and said this was sort of an indie pop kind of thing, so I went ahead and grabbed it. This is uh, an album by Painted Palms. I think it's self-titled. That was five dollars. Uh, yes, yeah, just some, some good indie pop music and uh, I, sp I spun this as well and definitely enjoyed it and glad I grabbed it. So that was what I got from the used section there. And I did pick up one new, one new, well, a new reissue of a, of a record I've had on my wish list for a while. Um, again, just stuff you see there is not normally stuff you see in other record stores. This is something that's been on my Amazon wish list for a while. And I've just never got around to pulling the trigger on it. But when you're in a record store and you see something that's on your wish list, then Sometimes it's easy just to go ahead and grab it. Uh, and this is the uh, Electronic Psychedelic Group 50 Foot Hose, and this is a reissue of their album Cauldron. From 1967, so definitely very early, but really cool blend of sort of a pop psych vibe 
that goes into more of a heavier psych vibe and then goes into like an electronic vibe and it sort of bounces between those things very interestingly and it it doesn't really stick in its lane it kind of as i said it kind of goes around and sometimes it's just really sunshiny pop and sometimes it's heavy psych and sometimes it's weird 60s electronica and i yeah i just i've dug this for a while i've listened to it digitally before so i, I knew what i was getting into with this and you know, as i said it was on my wish list so so i was glad to finally grab this on vinyl this did come with a nice little uh printed i guess almost a zine of uh just sort of history of the group i guess a bit and some photos and drawings and uh, just an interesting little insert there so that was nice that that came with that and then the vinyl itself pull this out of here uh, yeah kind of a kind of a <laughs> almost a almost a pukey green kind of color but pretty cool got some other colors in there and sort of yeah, just just a neat color and uh, yeah really cool I was glad glad to finally pick this up in physical format um, so yeah that was that was uh, Park Avenue CD. So after that, uh, Tim and Brad uh, had it. You know, they were they were done for the day. They were ready to go home. So we said our goodbyes. Took a took a quick uh, photo together, and then uh, my husband and I went to a. Uh, well, my destination was to go to a uh, Giordano's Pizza place. I watched one of Chris Brzezinski's videos the week before, and. He had shared, you know, when they did when they did one of their uh, Disney vacations, they uh, stopped in there to get some Chicago-style deep dish pizza, and I'm a, I'm pretty passionate about pizza, and I, I had never been there before, so I thought, what the heck, we're gonna we're gonna make a trip down there and check it out. So sort of figured out which one was the closest to where we were at, which was not real close. It was about a 25-minute drive or so. Uh, to the southern part of Orlando where Disney is near where Disney is and then uh, along the way I found a very very large Goodwill and so had to go in there and check it out I uh, found a couple of shirts like my work shirts here that I use and uh, picked up some records as well so I'll share those with you as this was these were found on the same day in the same trip even though um, Tim and Brad weren't with me. This first one I got here is something that was sort of popular in the early 2000s. Um, and that was sort of doing like techno remixes of hip hop songs or techno mashups of hip hop songs where you'd have a, a techno DJ produce a track that sort of melded up with the, the, the vocal portion of a hip hop track. Uh, so I found this one. It's a uh, uh, a Tribe Called Quest versus AK-1200, um, BDP, Boogie Down Productions versus Mark Pritchard, Foo Schnickens versus Pimp Juice, and Houdini versus DJ Swing Set and Jay Warren. So, yeah, I thought that was a cool find, and I think they were 59 cents at that particular Goodwill. So, uh, I grabbed that one. Fun little 12-inch to spin. Um, <laughs> uh I should call this video a whiter shade of Orlando or something like that because uh, I, another album that sort of works its way into the whiter shade of pale thing. Uh, this is a whiter shade of pale, mellow fruitfulness, the new organ sound. So this is a whiter shade of pale played on a, an organ and other, other tracks on here as well. Um, when a man loves a woman, uh, Michelle, just just modern sort of '60s pop songs played on an organ, and it, it's it's good. I I really dug this a lot, and this is a UK pressing. I don't know if this was released in in the US. Um, this might be a UK only kind of thing, but yeah, I thought this was really good. If you if you like organ music and you want to hear organ versions of '60s, you know, pop songs, then. Uh, it's, this was good. I, I dug it quite a bit. So that was a cool find. Uh, this was just a classical pickup. It's probably just something I'm going to put on Discogs because it's a $10 record. Um, uh, Bizet doing Carmen, Carmen on the Phillips label. Just a nice piece of classical there. So I grabbed that. 
Um, here's another UK pressing. This is a uh, big Western movie theme. So you got uh, Big Country, Magnificent Seven, High Noon, Fistful of Dollar, Stagecoach, um, How the West Was Won, The Good, Bad, and the Ugly, A Man, A Horse, and a Gun. Just classic, you know, Western movie themes all on one record and this is on the music for pleasure label uk pressing uh, so i thought that was a neat find as well uh, this one was just something odd i had to i had to check it out it's sort of i guess you could call this christian folk music uh, uh, it's it's on the inner varsity label kind of a, kind of almost a private press kind of thing jonathan and charles another week to go I'll see how they get that kind of, you know, folky kind of vibe, but they're doing uh, Christian-themed folk music. So these are sometimes fun just to listen to and experience once. And, uh, you know, for 59 cents, I'm not going to leave something something interesting behind, so I'll definitely get my 59 cents worth just spinning it once. Uh, so I'll grab that one. Uh, this next one, another one, I'm not sure. It's a sealed record. It's another one that's worth about $10, and I might end up selling it as well. Um, I'm going to have to sample it first and just check it out. Uh, but this is Smith & Son, Guitars Galore. And this is just some country folk kind of stuff, I believe, or early 70s probably. Yeah, that's on the Monument Records label. Definitely a classic classic label for this genre so uh yeah definitely cool to pick that up don't know if i'm gonna keep it or not but if not it goes into the gas money fund and last but uh not least i guess uh this is uh herb alpert and the tijuana brass doing this guy's in love with you that's also a uk pressing of this uh all right, so thank you for watching. Those are my pickups from the Orlando trip. Great to meet you, Brad and Tim. I really enjoyed hanging out. Hope we can hang out again soon. Had a really good time. So yeah, thanks for watching. I had a great time hanging out with those guys. Uh, always check out if you're going on trip somewhere or if you get, got VC members that are an hour or two away from you and you can you can go come to them or they can come to you. Uh, make it happen because it's always fun to meet people in person, hang out, you know, have some lunch, do some digging, chit chat. It's it's always a good time, and I've uh, always had good experiences with meeting people in the vinyl community. Uh, so thank you for watching. Have a great day, great night. Remember, there is no bad music, only music you don't like. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Cheers.